In this box is the 2024 HP Chromebook Plus X360 14B. It's an entry-level to mid-range convertible 14-inch Chromebook Plus model. It's another one that I first saw at Google's Chromebook Showcase back in May this year. This one has an Intel Core i3 N305 processor with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of universal flash storage. On Black Friday, I paid just over £200, that's about $253 US dollars, on eBay UK from Curry's Clearance. That was for this in good refurbished condition, hence no original box. I didn't post this particular deal to X, Threads or Blue Sky or include it in my Black Friday Chromebook deals video as it was a one-off listing. With that said, let's get into the unboxing and take a look at this one. I'll give you my first impressions, take you through the spec of this particular model and give you the details of the specs in the model range itself. Okay, so first off in on the left here, we should have the USB-C charger, should just be a 45 watt model on this one. So yep, here's the USB-C power brick. And then of course I've got a UK plug to go with it. Let's get the Chromebook and the packaging out now to take a look at it, all securely packaged over here. Okay, so taking a first look at the Chromebook and I can spot a couple of light scratches on the top, the worst probably being this one that's running into the logo, if that's showing up on camera okay. Fairly minor, it's all cosmetic, but it's obviously taken a, a bit of a scuff on the lid there. As mentioned, it is classified as a good refurbished, that's also known as a grade C. Um, so yeah, I am expecting the odd bit of maybe a cosmetic scratch or two like that on this one, but inside the screen and keyboard should all be clean, but we'll take a look in just a minute. If you've seen my other HP Chromebook 14A and Chromebook Plus 14A videos from 2024 models this year, you'll know there's one test in particular I want to do with this, which is to see if I can click the trackpad without opening it. Might sound strange, but listen to this. Yeah, it is possible again, just giving it a bit of a, a twist there. Not brilliant, but not a, a kind of deal breaker, but just you just wish that the overall chassis and build was a bit more rigid, so it wouldn't let you do that. The color of this one, I think, is just known as silver, and it is that gray silver color. No surprise, as you can see, um, sort of more silver or lighter silver accents, including on these hinges. So yeah, full plastic build on this one. The weight isn't too bad, it's maybe feeling a little bit heavier, maybe it's due to the touch screen on this one. I'll flash up on screen what this one weighs in at for me. Taking a look at the ports, on the left hand side we've got the first of two USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 ports for power data and display out. And then we've got a physical power button, uh, looks like there's an LED to the left of it as well, and a volume rocker. Over on the right hand side, if we start on the left, we've got another power charge indicator LED. We've got that second USB-C port, we've got a headphone microphone audio combo jack, and we've got a full size USB-A port, again that's 3.2 Gen 1. For other connectivity, it's Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. So yeah, fairly minimalistic on those ports. Would have been nice to see a card reader or an HDMI port, but nothing too surprising having seen the other HP Chromebook 14 series machines on the channel this year. Just looking at the back and the rear of the Chromebook, so you have got some ventilation for the processor and the fan on the back there. And again, there's more ventilation underneath. Very similar again to what we've seen in the 14A Chromebook Plus model. So I'll open it up and show you guys the keyboard deck now, of course being a convertible model. I can flip the screen all the way around on the back. I'll show you how it's looking from the sides now. So this is how it would be if you were using it in tablet mode of course. It has just powered on, we'll come back to the display in just a minute, but yeah you can see that touch display and this is how it would be in tablet use. But let's get back to that keyboard deck. You've got a well laid out keyboard. You have got these much smaller function keys again on the top row, but that's because HP are packing a bit more in there. You've got things like the menu key that you don't see on all Chromebook function rows. And you've also got the media play pause button again. Don't always see that one. You've got the speakers either side as well. Again, sort of prioritizing that media playback and uh, media consumption. And of course, for us Brits, and I guess in Europe, 
We've got the more US style sized return key. So we've got the smaller return key over on the right rather than the slightly larger one that we'd normally see. And we've got that more shallow key travel again as well. I'll just show you a bit of that. So yeah, not my favorite keyboard, fairly short key travel, just takes a bit of getting used to. We're seeing the full review if I do find it exactly the same as on the 14A Chromebook Plus. I think from what I'm seeing so far, it is the same keyframe. This particular one isn't backlit, but I think it may be an option on the model range. So just something to watch out for. Just to take a look at the trackpad. So again, looks very similar to the one on the 14A Chromebook Plus model. Um, yeah, it feels well seated, okay for clicks and fairly smooth. But again, we'll see in the full review if I do find that exactly the same as the one on the 14A. I'm going to get set up on the Chromebook now. Before I go too far, I'll jump into guest mode and we'll take a look at a few things before it gets updated. Okay, so we're into guest mode and I'm gonna check out a few things. So let's minimize that. Let's click down in the bottom right hand corner and click on the settings cog. Let's look at the display resolution first of all. So just start typing in display and pick display size. So we can see out of the box, this is running at 1536 by 864, but we can bump that up or down to the native resolution of 1920 by 1080. So yeah, this is a full HD display. We'll look more at the display in detail in just a minute. Next, let's come down to about Chrome OS on the left hand side here and we can see we're running version 129 of Chrome OS. So we're on 130 at the moment, 131 should be just around the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and click check for updates, get that updated. So yeah, off it goes, downloading and applying the latest update. Next up, let's click down on diagnostics here so we can check out the battery health and cycles, of course, with this being a refurbished Chromebook. Okay, and looking good straight away. So two battery cycles and 99% battery health. So yeah, looking decent there. A really good result for this being a grade C good refurbished device. So yeah, very happy with that. And then finally, if we close that down and we're back in about Chrome OS and we can look at the additional details here. So I'm just gonna click into that so we can see the update schedule. And as expected, because it's got the Core i3 N305, we are gonna get updates to Chrome OS until June 2035. So one of the longest update lives to Chrome OS out there on a Chromebook at the moment. Okay, so I'm logged in with my test user now, just while the Chromebook finishes setting up my app. So I'll take you through the core specs of this one and the model range itself. So I've got the Intel Core i3 N305 processor in this one. There are other non-Chromebook Plus models in this range that will have the Intel N100 or N200 processor in them, as we've seen in some other Chromebooks on the channel. For RAM, I've got 8 gig of low power DDR5 RAM, but again, for models that come with the N100 or N200 processor, they'll only have 4 gig of RAM. I've got 256 gig of universal flash storage on this one, but again, models with the N100 or N200 will have less storage, and double check, it might be EMMC. With this one being a Chromebook Plus model, you're also getting all the benefits that come with that too, including software exclusives at the moment, like help me read, help me write, the extra video and audio controls being another good example. Taking a look at the 14 inch touch display now in a bit more detail, and yep, first impressions are it looks fairly good and touch response seems okay. So yeah, it's a 14 inch full HD IPS display. It's in a 16 by nine aspect ratio and it's claimed brightness is 250 nits. So not the brightest, but it's not looking too bad so far. And it's got more of a matte finish to it, which I actually quite like. And we often see a more glossy finish on touch screens. The bezels as well, top and bottom a little bit larger, sides a bit smaller, not the best, not the worst, but again, just something to be aware of. You'll see more of that in just a second as I pop into tablet mode and we'll check out a bit of gaming. Also worth mentioning that there's a full HD webcam at the top of the screen with the privacy slider. Again, it's full HD on this one as it's Chromebook Plus, but the other models with the N100 or N200 processor are likely just to have a 720p webcam. Okay, just testing out a bit of gaming in tablet mode with Real Racing 3 and all looking and sounding pretty good. I think the only thing not looking good is my driving as usual. 
So I've mentioned the Chromebook Plus 14a a few times, and as I've still got it, I thought I'd just show it to you against this one, just to look at the two together. So the 14a on the right here and the 14b on the left here. And of course, the big difference is that the 14b is an X360, e.g. it's convertible, whereas the 14a is a clamshell model. And you can see the immediate difference from looking at them from above here. So you've got the hinges on the back of the 14b and on the 14a, you can't see the hinge at all from this view because you've just got one bar across. I'll just open them up and show you the keyboard decks briefly and we can just see if I was right in how similar I'm making them sound. The key travel on the 14B may be ever so slightly more shallow. Um, and you've obviously got some changes like of course you've got the power key for the 14a because you won't have a physical one on the side because it's not convertible like the 14b x360 here and you can see the speaker grills are also um, slightly larger on the 14a than they are on the 14b x360 whether the speakers inside are any different again it's something i'll try and pay attention to for my full review and just to show them opened up with their displays on, we've got the 14B X360 on the left and the 14A on the right. Very similar looking displays, I think similar claimed brightness levels. Of course, the 14B X360 being touch and the 14A being non-touch. If you do want to see more on this Chromebook Plus 14A model, I've got two videos on the right of the screen now that you could watch next. There's my unboxing and there's my review. Otherwise, the video on the left of the screen is the one that the YouTube algorithm has picked for you to watch. Cheers.